everyone. My name is Charlene Vaca, um, and I'm the CEO of bizworld.org. Um, great to meet all of you. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of the work we do at BizWorld. So what, what we do is we teach young people about entrepreneurship and business. Um, so we start as early as third grade. Um, we partner with educators across the world um, to bring our curriculum into the classroom. So um, just like any of the, you know, in any day in the classroom, you're learning about a certain subject. Um, what we do is we give teachers that material and that they can teach youth about business, about entrepreneurship. Um, so we inspire them to think like an entrepreneur, to develop uh, what we call is an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, so as I said, we start as early as third grade. Um, the way it works is in your classroom, you form a company with other uh, members. Um, you each have a job and you actually start a business. You think of a product and you you create what it's going to look like. You design that product and then you, you physically make those products. Um, and then you have to tell people about that product. And that's called marketing. So you create a marketing campaign to market that product in the classroom or throughout the school. Um, and then you, you have all these products, you've told people about it, and you actually get to sell them in the classroom. And you, you sell these products for, in the program, we use BizBox. Um, it's like Monopoly money. And you sell these products um, in return for BizBox and you make revenue. Um, so once you have all that revenue, you're able to find out how much money you made, but you also have to look at how much money you spent to make those products. So, so throughout the program, um, you're raising money to create your company, to make your products, to market those products. Um, and you, you fundraise through a VC, a venture capitalist, or you go take out a bank loan. And you buy your materials, your raw materials for your products, your marketing content, um, and you track all of those expenses um, through a finance ledger. And once you have all of those expenses tracked and you've earned some revenue, you're able to find out if your company made a profit. Um, and a profit is your revenue minus your expenses equals your profit. And if you spend more than you earned, meaning your revenue is less than your expenses, you can have a loss. So that is a, a quick overview of what our BizWorld curriculum looks like in a classroom and what we teach kids. Um, we have tiers of this. So once they've learned about it, um, they can go on to apply this to app building. They can go on to apply this to social good. We have an impact challenge that allows you to create real products and sell them to benefit a social cause in your area. Um, that's our social impact challenge. And then we have a, another program for a little bit older youth, um, about 16 to 22, for real business ideas. So if you have a real business idea that you need help you know, getting off the ground or maybe growing, we have our Young Entrepreneur Success Program. And in that program, um, we actually have a 12-week accelerator where we have young people apply for. Um, and we give them a mentor. We work with them for 12 weeks during workshops. And we help them develop that business. And at the end, they can participate in our demo day. And we actually give out $30,000 in funding annually. So... Yeah, at BizWorld, um, we're very, very, fo we're very focused on working with youth because we know that young people are the future, but more importantly, that you have the creativity to create solutions that we may not think of. And we want to make sure that you feel supported in gaining more knowledge or finding a network to support you or getting money to actually get that business off, off the ground. Um, this was something that, you know, I didn't, I didn't see when I was young. Um, I had a traditional schooling um, up until high school where I left a little early to attend college early. 
Um, and I was always interested in the business um, arm of my career. I have a marketing and an accounting background. Um, but when I came to biz world, I thought, wow, like I just went through college to get this business degree, learn things that we can be teaching kids earlier. Um, so that has, I've been with biz world 11 years and, um, I've been lucky enough to be promoted to CEO and I, I'm very passionate about giving the opportunities that I didn't necessarily have as a young person to young people like you. Um, I think that's the the gist of, you know, what I do on a daily basis. I work with my amazing team members of our, my nonprofit. So we do all of this um, out of, you know, the, the desire to want to promote entrepreneurial minds throughout the U.S. and abroad, a global market. Um, so I work with my team. I work with other business um, professionals in the industry to, who are interested in supporting young people. And I get to work with with teachers. I get to talk to teachers across the U.S. and the globe, as well as young people. So, um, we have some student questions already. Uh, do you mind if we jump right in? And guys, keep jump right into questions. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, this came uh, from an individual, and they wanted to know what is the difference between a nonprofit and a for profit company. And I see. Uh, Mr. Valenzano's class out there. If you guys have questions, feel free to message them in the chat and we can unmute you and you guys can ask Charlene yourselves. That is a great question that a lot of even adults don't really understand. Um, and I'm not going to pretend to be able to give you the, the definition, but at, um, at its core, our goal isn't that we don't make a profit. It's that the goal of that profit is that it's reinvested into our cause. Um, so for instance, our my team members, my nonprofit members, it's not that we work for free. Um, we all have jobs, we have salaries. Um, and the programs that we um, sell, if you will, they do have a price tag and they're, it's pretty small. We make it so it's the goal isn't to make profit, it's to cover costs. But then we have um, like large companies like uh, U.S. Bank is a sponsor of ours that give us money to help support classrooms who can't pay for programs. So more than half of our programs are given to educators at no cost. Um, so at the end of the day, I still plan at the end of the year to have money left over or a profit. Um, but the goal is that that just goes back into the organization. And the next year, maybe we can give out more programs or I can have more team members helping. Um, in a for-profit business, it's a little bit different because that money, while being reinvested in the company, it's reinvested into the company to make more money. Um, you also have a, a larger scale, more employees potentially. Um, and the goal is, is to make money so everyone can make more money. Well, that's uh, very simply put, and uh, thank you for that uh, poignant answer. So um, so I have one student emailed here, and they wanted to know, uh, can you describe any notable success stories or impacts that bizworld.org has had on students who have participated in your programs over the years? Yeah, um, I actually, I can talk about one that we we just had the pleasure of investing in her business um, on Thursday at our Yes Demo Day. Um, so we have a young lady. Um, she her name is Bella Lynn, and she has a business called Guinea Loft. Um, you can look it up on Annie's Amazon. Guinea like guinea pigs loft. Um, and this is actually the second business that she's brought to us through our Yes program. She also has another successful business called. T, as in the letter, T leggings. Um, we did not invest in that business, but we did invest $10,000 in the Guinea Loft business on Thursday um, to help her grow her audience and her product range. Um, she came to us very early after per participating in some grade school programs. She entered our Girlpreneur competition when she was, I think she was 11 or 12 at the time. 
Um, and we were able to work with her over the years. Um, she, uh, I don't think she won that competition, but she stayed in contact with us. She came through our yes program now twice, um, to accelerate these businesses and being able to see her growth of the sweet 11 year old girl with the solution to high quality, but affordably priced leggings to then finding another solution that she wanted to create for herself as a pet lover. She loves guinea pigs and she wanted to create better environments for them. So she created this really cool um, enclosure um, and a really awesome business model. So not only the, uh, the enclosure, the guinea pig cage, if you will, which is really cool, really sleek. Um, she has different ideas of the business model of how she will also sell subscriptions for the papers on the bottom and maybe enter um, into um, a corporate angle of providing guinea pig days for employees to interact with uh, stress relieving small animals. Um, so that, I mean, just watching her growth and being able to shepherd her along her journey has been really impactful, I think, for our whole team. Um, the, the nature of our work is we work with you guys so young. You know, we work with classroom educators that are serving third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Um, so we don't always get to hear those stories of how the long term effect um, but we've been doing this for 25 years. So I've definitely been able to have snippets of those. I've, I've been able to hire someone, um, that worked with us for a while who had actually gone through our programming in fourth grade. I believe she was in the San Francisco area. Um, yeah. And she said it, it, what, it, what, it's what empowered her to apply for business school and to lead her career down that pathway. That is so that's that's like one of those teachable like this is why I do it. That's uh really cool. Is do you think her next thing is gonna be uh leggings for guinea pigs? I that would be great. You know, I'm I'm seeing all these cool things in PetSmart these days. There was like a armchair and a Halloween costume. So that's might not be too far out of the the next thing I know, she's gonna have a tea leggings, guinea pig, guinea loft <laughs> crossover with there an athletic go. wear for guinea pigs. We have a question from Mr. Valenzano's class. Uh, you guys yeah. should be able to unmute to ask. You had a very good question whenever you guys are ready. I think we're having uh, some microphone difficulties there. I'll go ahead and ask. Uh, they want to know what are some specific resources that he can use as a teacher to learn more and start an entrepreneurship uh, as a teenager. So this was, this was coming from a teenager. My, my apologies, but again, yeah. what are some specific resources I can use to learn more and start an entrepreneurship as a teenager? So as, as a student, um, I encourage you to, you can come to our yes program as a teenager to have your idea developed. Um, we will accept any business idea. Um, whether it's just that something you've thought up or something you've been active on, um, you can, uh, it's completely free. You can come to our yes program. We do have many lessons to help you think about how to articulate the like problem and solution in the market. Um, because our primary school programs are focused to be delivered through an educator or facilitator in a classroom setting or after school, um, I, I, I don't have a lot of resources that I can give you off cuff um, for you directly, but I can tell you that there's an abundance of material out there. Um, if you look into uh, programs or resources or even um, conversations like this that Ralph has on his site to learn more about how people like came up with their idea. And usually it starts with recognizing a problem and you creating the solution for that. Um, and there's you can be inspired by talks of entrepreneurs developing their ideas. Um, you can look at resources on um, some of the, the ed sites like um, Khan Academy or any of them. They have really great content. Um, for us at BizWorld, we'd also, you know, happy to discuss if you have 
a desire to create like a, a club or a team within your school and have someone to help facilitate the learning, we'd be happy to discuss with them about how we can provide our programs to your school to teach you about business and entrepreneurship. And definitely check out uh, their YES program. Uh, the YES program doesn't cost anything for young entrepreneurs to complete. Again, that's bizworld.org slash YES. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go with the final question because I know it's getting kind of late for our students in Eastern Europe. And if you guys have any more questions, you can visit bizworld.org. They have a contact us on their website. Um, so they want to know, um, in your opinion, what are the most critical skills and knowledge that young students should acquire to prepare for future entrepreneurial endeavors? That's a great question. Um, and it's not, it's not just a single thing. Um, when we talk about an entrepreneurial mindset or um, some of the educators in space, like a 21st century skills, um, it's an abundance of things that really help set you for a bright future. Um, and particularly in this day and age where things are evolving, things are changing, new innovations are coming up. Um, I think the the biggest thing is perseverance. And what that means is that things are going to change and things aren't going to come out the way that you expect. Um, and quite honestly, you might fail. Um, but I always think that the best characteristic of a true entrepreneur is their ability to push forward, to keep going, to take that as a learning, right? When we fail, it just means we learn something. And we're going to do it differently next time. Um, to me, that is the most important. Um, but also, you know, being a team player, but knowing how to lead, right? Knowing how to cooperate, but also how to be responsible for your work. Um, knowing how to be flexible, right? This day and age, nothing's uh, black and white, right? Sometimes we have to figure out how to to bend where we need to go, to put our organization in our 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 lives and the, the um, track we want to do. And don't, when you're looking, when you want to do something with your life and you're passionate about it and you feel that mm, people aren't going to take me seriously or they've told you no, don't give up, right? Look for the opportunities that are out there or create the opportunities that you need. And that, I mean, that is, that is part of what we've done um, is that we weren't seeing a lot of opportunities for young people to really pursue their real business ideas. So we created the opportunity and, you know, we wish we could do it bigger and better and hopefully we will. Um, but you can do the same. You can find, you can see where you want your life trajectory to go and you can look for opportunities or create them if they're not there. Excellent so. advice. Thank you so much for your, for being flexible today and stepping in. Excellent job. It's almost like you had pre-prepared answers. This is incredible. Thank you uh, to all the students for joining us. Thank you again, Charlene. This was wonderful. Uh, you guys, we have many, many wonderful guest speakers coming up on the horizon. Be sure to check out edutainmentlearning.com backslash upcoming. We have Christopher Columbus expert, George Washington expert, 9-11 survivors, Holocaust survivors, and a plenty of entrepreneurial experts on the horizon. So sign up for any and all. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I hope everyone stays healthy, happy, and safe. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank you, Edutainment Learning. This was great.